Hello guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to do the shading and shadowing using diagonal lines in Anima, also called cross hatching. So let's get started. First off, uh, I'm going to start with the hair. So basically, you just pick a direction. Uh, that was terrible, but then you just try to make even lines um, with even space in between those lines. That I said diagonal lines at the start of this video, but they can be in any direction, so not necessarily uh, diagonal. Okay, so the darker you want the shade to be, the the more uh, the tighter the space between those lines will be so I'm just going to that was a terrible mistake actually but I'm just going to do the same thing again so as you can see in some spaces you have to go in there and then work your way out which is something very hard to do in fact but um, but you know uh, you just have to try to connect them as best uh, as good as possible but you know it's really hard to connect those lines but you, you don't really think about that you just try to make as even lines as possible and they will naturally look very you know matching because people don't actually look at those lines people think of the whole thing as a shade and um, you know when it's really dark the those lines will be so tight it looks like a gradient but in fact those are lines so you can see there Okay, so I'm just going to add some lines in the insides of the ear, if you guys can see that. Well, the thing about drawing very small things is that sometimes it's literally impossible to do that because the thing that you want to shade might be even smaller than the diagonal lines that you have, for example, here. Uh, no, it's still it's still visible. I'm just going to just give the whole iris a, a, just a dark shade. I don't really want to think about it when it's so small. But you know, sometimes, for example, in the nose, it's almost invisible, those lines. It's, but you just have to add, maybe, four, there I just added four lines for you, know, really insignificant lines. In the mouth, whatever. It's still lines, but you guys probably can't see that. Okay, so for this neck thing, I'm just going to make like a boundary for where I'm going to, uh, draw the shadow and then I'm just going to make these lines and uh, you know having that line visible is completely okay a lot of anime and manga artists do that um, so the, the thing about where to shadow is to that is that you have to you know just study a real life object and then look at where the shadows are and then apply the same principles to your drawing. For example, here I'm just trying to find place to shadow, like here. See, a lot of times I make that, that boundary to indicate where I'm going to shadow and then I do the shadowing, which is a good thing a lot of times, but sometimes it doesn't match the place. I'm going to show you guys later in this video. Okay. Just gonna um, shadow a little bit over the collarbone and a little bit on this side because the cloth is covering some of the sunlight. So he's looking towards left. So I'm gonna make it so that the light source is a little bit towards left because you know, a lot of times in films and stuff like that, they tend to have the the light source on where the character is looking at. By the way, I'm just going to add shadows below there um well it's actually it should be pointing downwards like this and then this thing should also be pointing downwards like this like this and then shadows on this and then a little bit behind that too actually the whole part of this i'm just going to do the shadowing like that hmm so you know that when you're doing that try uh, you have to keep um, make sure that all lines are even evenly pressured 
uh, that means that some strokes i mean all the strokes should have equally strength you can't have some strokes that are you know much stronger and the other strokes are weaker it will look strange and not beautiful so the principles about shadowing shadowing um the clothes is to add shadows behind the creases those are the easiest things to to do just add a line there and then give it shadow um like that too and then uh, the, of course, when you're doing this, there are different uh, levels of how dark it should be. You just have to pay attention to that. Sometimes you want to have really dark. Uh, if it's large crease, then of course the shadow is going to be really dark. But if it's uh, if it's um, if it's if it's a small crease, then the shadow will be not as dark so the lines are either evenly distributed or you pr you make those lines lighter it's a possible so you have two decisions here I mean two possible options here so you, you can uh, make it light by having the, the the spaces between larger or you can make the lines lighter themselves and also uh, the bumps remember to have I'm gonna zoom in a little bit but I'm sorry that it, the quality decreases when I zoom in but you know this line and then shadows below or above you know depending on where the light source is and it's just but not all bumps of course but for example the light source is kind of going down there then there is but if it's going straight onto the bump then it will there will not be any uh, shadows just gonna add shadows there on behind both the creases and then shadows behind this whole thing and then I'm just gonna add shadows in this video I, I'm gonna make very extricate shadows like normally I wouldn't care so much about where the shadows are and stuff like that but just for the sake of this video I'm gonna do that Okay, so I'm just going to give a shade to this whole line in the middle. Just a style of the clothing. And just to have something more to do to show you guys more of how to do. So you see, I try my best to keep all lines identical. See, that was pretty good. Pretty well done. Um, and then I'm just going to make the buttons even darker. Um, actually, um, it's, that is a little bit uh, odd that buttons are so dark. But since I shad <laughs> I shaded over the buttons, I don't want to erase the thing inside of them again. So, and you see, this uh, this shade, uh, I I I intend to have it as dark as this one. So I have to keep the spaces evenly distributed. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, have the same level of shade on this. And then here too. I just forgot to draw something here. Hmm, how can I forget that? But here it is. Okay, so the sword. Hmm, I'm just gonna oh there are the button there. I'm just gonna actually this whole thing nah I'm just gonna leave it like that. Uh the the sword did you guys see that? Oh okay. The sword, I'm just gonna give the sword a shade, a dark shade. I'm just gonna start with the body of the of the sword. Should be much darker than that, but um, uh, I don't know. I'm actually just gonna do it like this so they have the same shade or same darkness, and then I'm just gonna add another. Okay, so I'm, I'm surprised I've never shown this till now, but you know, one of the main uh, tricks of cross hatching is that. You cross the lines when you want a darker shade you know actually 
I, I should have done this instead of talking about, you know, getting spaces closer together or stuff like that because in cross-hatching, the name comes from that you cross the lines, you choose another direction and then add the, the equal or the same level of shade, the same level of darkness, but just in another direction so that they come over, are placed over each other and therefore will make a darker shade. But <laughs> yeah, perhaps I didn't do that. But that's completely okay, really. Uh, it it's just a just the just a matter of style, really, because there's no one way to draw anything. And then I'm just gonna light shade on that part. And then actually, I'm gonna add some shades like here. And then behind that finger and um, on this side like some shade like this and then like this pretty good or I'm just gonna extend it a little bit okay so I'm just gonna add lines Hmm, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more shadows below the armpit or under the armpit. Hmm, so that's pretty good and actually I have to, there's some blood there, I <laughs> I made this, what is it called, the stench, no it's not a stench, what is it called, the mark of the blood, you know, the, the wet part of the blood, so the blood kind of, you know, dried there on the clothes. And then I have to give it a darker shade, of course, because it becomes darker when the, it's red. Okay, and then I'm actually going to make the wound itself much darker by adding another direction. You know, actually, it's basically completely dark when it's so small. Hmm, and that's basically it. So that was it. And what else do I need to add? Well, just going to add another direction. Because, okay, so most of the time when you, when you have shaded something, actually most of the time you want to shade everything. But um, when you have shaded something, but you want to add shadows on the shade, most of the time you just add that in the another direction as I've done here. And as I'm going to do here too. That's at least the conventional way to do it. And I'm just going to add shadows below each of these uh what is it called chunks of here of here of hair <laughs> mm, like this because they are like dangling over over the forehead so they cast shadow on the forehead like that hope you guys can see that it's a little bit too small actually um and uh let's go ahead and give him some shadows below the eyebrow because he is frowning like very very frowning that makes actually a recess and the shadows are being cast there okay let's just zoom out a little bit i'm gonna have some some shadow some more shadow above the the collarbone and some shadows on this side of the of the neck or not the neck but the front of the neck was called I don't know I'm actually gonna also add uh, gonna add shadow on this side like this because they are I mean this clothes has been folded down okay that was it and actually I'm gonna add a whole shade on the whole pair of jeans that he has Hmm. Okay, that wasn't. That wasn't uh, the end of the pair of jeans. Okay, there I just got lazy. I just didn't finish lines. But here we go. 
pretty good. It's probably dark enough. I'm just I just think that this part isn't dark enough, so I'm just gonna add another direction to make this even darker. Like that. I still think this isn't dark enough, but I think the hair is also not dark enough. So I'm just gonna add another direction which is com exactly the opposite direction of the hair. Also, I, I kind of failed to keep uh, the space between them evenly. Ah, whatever. Don't forget to add that in the shadow in the places that we have shadowed or made shadows. I'm just gonna add um, shadow on this side too, on like behind this. How do I explain that? Just like this, you know, to give them a 3D look, like this. Hope you guys can, uh, hope you guys can see this. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so going for a tip up there like that. Um, again here. But, you know, it's so freaking small that you can't, you really can't see that. I normally don't do this that much because a lot of times when it, it's just too small for it to, for you to see. But uh, it's possible to see that, so I am going to add some like on this side too, like this. Okay, so that's pretty much it. If you just go down again, try to find any places where you could have added some shadows, like like this is the pocket, so I'm just gonna add some shadows like this, just a kind of a, like a gradient, you know, can't really see any edge to the to the shadows. And we're also gonna add shadows here, and then shadows on this side of the of the arm, like this. So more shadows and take notice that I shadowed over this part because they had shadows but that is caused by the this this color blocking the sunlight but then I shadowed again because the, sh the light source is coming from this way so another reason that why it should be shadow so it's double and it becomes even darker so that's the reason and I think that's pretty much it. I can't find any places where we've forgotten to shadow, so that was it. Actually, there's one space, one place, and it's that. No, no, no not really. Just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so pretty good. So compared to the, at the start of this video, this drawing looks much more complete. So I just have to. I uh, hope you guys learned something new and I want to say thank you guys for watching and if you want to see more just subscribe to my channel if you want to if you have any questions just leave that in the comment section below if you have any requests just ask that in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video goodbye